Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and our Kuzate Carnate playthrough. So technically, <laughs> actually, I probably shouldn't be saying that anymore because let's face it, we're not actually a part of the Kuzate Carnate anymore, but we are using their units primarily and their style of fighting, so I suppose it still applies at least a little bit. Anyway, in the last episode, we did almost, well, take something, kind of, but here's the thing. Rajaya is the main reason why we're having issues right here. And as you can see, she's actually got a higher power level than we do. So we might very well have a bit of a problem here. Now, if I can, I would love to be able to defeat her. Not entirely sure if it will be doable. Bear in mind that we did also advance our clan tier in the previous episode as well. And I would love to return to Kuze territory and continue recruiting units. And, uh, well... Uh, I believe we have a pretty large army capacity at this point as well, but uh, unfortunately that's probably not going to be a thing that we will be able to currently do, even though I would love to do it, because these guys are going to be kind of uh, stopping us. But uh, yeah, technically Rajea wouldn't actually stop us anyway. Technically she would just be like, oh, you can just leave if you want, you know, not a big deal. But uh, we do want to kind of eliminate her, because if we can, then that is going to... Whoa, okay. <laughs> Did you see that? Did a whole bunch of damage, but uh, not really much resulting in it. So, yeah. Anyway, the point is, is that, wow, we have done so much damage already. I can't even imagine how much damage we've done. That is pretty good. I would like to try and eliminate those Palatine Guards, because they're really really good we know how good they can be so eliminating as many of those guys as i can get my hands on that would be great if i can oh no 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 that is not too good that is not too good oh what what i see now this is what i'm talking about i was talking about the you know this in the previous episode how sometimes i'm pretty decent with my timing when it comes to pole arm attacks but again i am I think I'm just I think I'm just nervous about attacking the Palatine guards. They're probably going to be able to do a lot of damage to me, as you saw already. They did deal some pretty nice damage. And I think I'm actually attacking from the wrong angle as well. I think that's also kind of causing me a bit of an issue. So ah, never mind. Most of my people are actually doing pretty well as it is, so I guess I'm just gonna get out my bow and try and do some things with that because it seems like I'm actually kinda decent with the bow now for some reason. I seem to be able to hit quite often with it. I think it's because of the missile speed. The missile speed really makes a huge difference to how accurate you can really be with these things. Ah, oh, that guy's now dead. Oh well, never mind. That is indeed a victory for us. Can you imagine that? That is kind of crazy. I would not have expected us to win in a battle against the leader of the enemy faction so incredibly decisively. But we were able to. We were able to. And uh, in a pretty stylish fashion as well, apart from the fact that uh, Byron did end up taking quite a bit of damage. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing that I would have done differently if at all possible. But there you go. We lost three units. We gained 58 renown. We were able to plunder a massive amount of cash. And you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to take her prisoner. Because here's the thing. If I don't take her prisoner, she's going to come out of her nearby town extremely quickly. I feel like the developers or some mod somewhere has to fix this in some way. Because I know that a bunch of you have also uh, let me know in the comments too that this is just not the way to be. Because these lords, they're being released... And then two days later, maybe not even two days later, maybe just a day later, they're already out on the battlefield with about 50 to 60 units. And personally, as a player, I do not believe that would be possible. I think it is going to be very difficult to do that unless you have great relations all over the place and you're able to recruit from the entirety of one village and then another village and then that's it and then you probably have about 40 to 50 units just from those uh recruiting sprees but it's very unlikely that that's going to be the case for every single village for every single lord so i think that needs tweaking a little bit but you know 
I, I, as I said before, I don't want to make it easier for myself. I just want to see more realism in regards to how lords recruit volunteers. I don't want them to basically go randomly all, all over the place and, you know, get themselves taken prisoner or anything like that. I don't want them to do that. I just want them to be a little bit slower to get those units out. Because as it stands right now, they are supernaturally fast at what they're able to do. So anyway, I'm not going to be taking any prisoners. As I said before, I'm not taking prisoners because I am wanting to be a little bit careful with how much speed we have. These are actually pretty nice boots. So I will take the boots just in case someone uh, from our party wants to use them. And I think that's basically all I want to take at the moment. All right, so does anyone else want to use these? And no, it doesn't seem like it. Ah, yes, it seems like someone does. Also, someone let me know that there is an update to the Auto Gear mod. And apparently what it does is it makes it possible for you to lock items into your um, equipment slots, basically. So... Every single little thing here has a locking button, I would assume, and you can just lock it, and then that thing will not get replaced, which I think is actually fantastic, because in the case of Byron, this is going to be really, really important for us with the glaive. The glaive is going to be really, uh, really nice for me not to replace every single time. And uh, the same thing with my Bandit playthrough as well, because um, if you don't know anything about the Bandit playthrough, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you don't want to see it, then what I'm doing there is I'm playing basically as an infantry-focused character and an infantry-focused army. I'm using a whole bunch of two-handed uh, weapons as much as I can, and uh, you know, just having a whole bunch of rebellious fun, basically. But whenever there's a horse in my inventory, which of course I obviously will have some horses in my inventory. I am, with the auto gear, always equipping the horse uh, every single time, and that's not really working out too well for me. So it's a nice thing that the developer of the mod has uh, done a little bit of thinking on that, and is ma that makes a huge difference. It does. It makes a huge difference. Anyway, I am now with 143 maximum company size. I have Regea in my army at the moment, in my prisoner's hold, and the best thing that I can do is head back to this castle right here, and uh, oh yeah, someone actually mentioned something as well, where if I change myself to scout, then I can level up scouting, and I suppose I will do that, because is there anyone else? No, wait a minute, wait a minute, we already have a scout right here. We already have a scout, so that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, does anyone else want to do anything? I don't think so. I don't think they really need to do anything else. I'm just going to make myself... Shall, shall I do the Quartermaster? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make myself the Quartermaster because my Surgeon medicinal skills are so incredibly high at the moment. It just makes no difference really for me to be a Surgeon or not at this point because we are maxed out. Or at least we have the maximum that I can currently uh, level. Uh, at least until I gain a little bit of extra intelligence or whatever the case may be. Now I am getting I am getting a lot of relation decreases from this one clan within the empire, and I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be uh, anything useful or uh, you know dangerous in the future. But I guess we'll see. Anyway, speed of building castles and walls increased by thirty percent. That's not really going to help us at all, is it? No, it's not really going to help us at all. Anyway, let's just uh, speed things up a little bit because obviously now that Regea is no longer in sight, I should have a pretty, I'm not going to say easy time, but I'm going to say that I have maybe a slightly simpler, less conflict-ridden time. Hello. Who's, who's that? All boss. All boss. Okay, well, I have a pretty big uh, target on my back, shall we say, because... If they are able to defeat me, and they're actually uh, fully surrounding me at the moment, which is quite uh, quite smart of them, but if they are able to defeat me, then they will release their leader, which I gotta say is maybe kind of smart of them, maybe. Anyway, uh, my engineering is going to, of course, be... Oh, hello. Right. <laughs> Another army, I see. Another army, uh-huh. All right, so honoratus. Okay, so how? What do they have here? 
they have 190 Imperial recruits. 190 of those things. That is actually kind of amazing. All right, so I'm going to just fight in Curion here, and I'm going to fight the other guy. And we're going to try and eliminate these fellows from the board, basically. If you treat it like a board game, then I guess, you know, like, yeah, uh, eliminate them from the board. And uh, we'll see if we can maybe level up my bow skill a little bit more as well, because I personally feel like my bow skill is, I think it's quite close to 150. So I would like, if at all possible, to get it to that level. I'm not entirely sure what kind of skill I'm going to be gaining from it. But I can only hope it's going to be something nice, something that will no doubt help us quite a bit. These guys are literally just going to be running away because, let's face it, the morale damage that we are going to be able to do so incredibly quickly here. Don't know why I'm missing so many times, but there you go. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway, yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, after we are able to do this, we might very well be able to win in a battle against the enemy army. I know, that seems like a pretty big, pretty tall order for us, but I'm thinking that it might very well be possible, because even though I could, well, even though it would probably be better for me to return to Kuzate territory and then come back here at a later time, um, with some more units, obviously, because at the moment we are 40 below the amounts of units that we're supposed to have, in regards to, uh, you know, my my stuff, basically, you know, making sure that we have maximum company size is usually a good idea, and I would definitely say that it might, yeah, it might actually be an idea. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go back to Kuzay territory. The thing is, is that I don't want to waste time. The main enemy that we're having right now is literally just time, because what is going to be happening now is it's kind of like a race. We kind of have to, um, we kind of have to make sure that Regea does not escape before we have actually been able to take something. So I am almost forced into doing a siege at this point, because if I don't do the siege, then I will have wasted the opportunity of taking Regea prisoner. And who knows what kind of units she's going to be able to bring out of the woodwork, because they have now been given the ability to take units out of nearby garrisons to be able to shore up their armies a little bit as they run around recruiting from villages. That's how the developers of Bannerlord fixed the issue of lords continually getting themselves taken prisoner by bandits and so on, because if they're running around with one, two, three units, then they're going to be easy pickings for these larger bandit parties. But nowadays they go into a garrison of a town or a castle or something like that, and they are able to take units out of it. So that makes a big difference. It really does. It really, really makes a massive, massive difference. Anyway, I've got some more, um, more war horses right there, which is pretty good. And I'm just going to take that. Now, I'm thinking, do you think we will be able to achieve victory here? I'm thinking yes. You know that. I'm actually thinking yes. This is, ooh, um, you know, I'm, uh, I, I don't know. If I can do this, if I can do this, this is going to be one of the greatest victories that uh, Byron has seen, at least, because Barney has, of course, been through the grinder, so to speak. But uh, this is going to be kind of interesting. I'm going to try and see if I can maybe lure them over to this area here first. All right, so here we go. I have maneuvered around them a little bit, and I didn't want to fight in the nighttime, so I just kind of waited around a little bit to uh, get us to sort of like dawn area sort of thing. And uh, now this is the, the, the power level. I, I, I've, got, I've got to say that I personally feel like the power level doesn't necessarily indicate whether a particular army is going to win. I think in general, the best thing that we can do is just... Just go for it, you know, just go for it, see what happens. If we do end up taking too many casualties, then that's actually fine, because we've dealt so much damage to the opponent at that point. And this is exactly the reason why I wanted to stay in this area as well, because this area is utterly just fantastic for fighting on horseback. And you can see already here that I am able to do massive damage with my bow skills. Haha, <laughs> he says as he misses every single shot, of course. But yeah. The point is, is that if I'm able to, 
My bow skill is now 145. Yeah, so I'd like to level that up a little bit. But yeah, I personally feel like because this is such an overwhelming amount of recruits, I think personally we have the advantage. Even if our power level is quite a bit lower, I think we have the advantage. Just literally because they're all recruits and I don't I don't really expect them to know really what, what they're going to be able to do against us, to be honest. I mean, what are they going to be able to do? I don't know. But, well, I will try and eliminate some of the enemy, uh, enemy lords as well if I can. There's another guy. So, yeah, this is the thing. They are actually splitting into two groups, which is not exactly great. That was nice damage right there for me. And maybe I can do a little bit more. Don't really want to run into someone with a polearm, though. And some of these guys actually do have polearms, so it would be bad if that would were to happen. Because getting off my mount at this point would be a pretty big death sentence. Gonna actually jump over here, try and take out this guy. Ah, no, no, okay, yeah. This is actually an enemy, yep, enemy lord right there. And now here's the thing. We've kind of got to harass their archers a pretty big deal. Because if we don't do that, they're probably going to be the only ones that will be able to stop our horse archers from actually doing their thing. And uh, that's, what we were told. that's what we were told earlier on when we spoke to a guy. Um, he said, hey, you know, horse archers, they're going to be countered by crossbowmen. So being able to have something that... Uh, you know, consistently harasses those particular units is probably a good idea, you know, trying to take out those those archers as fast as possible. Ah, no. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I'd like to get I'd like to get more kills with my uh, pole arm if at all possible, but it seems like it's kind of difficult for me to do that this time around for some reason. Ah, there we go. Nice. Okay, that was some good damage. But just look at all the recruits. Uh, like lit literally every second, uh, every every second. Wow, I actually, I don't know. <laughs> Almost every single kill is a recruit of some kind. It's just absolute ludicrous. Oh wow! Did you see that? This is exactly what I'm talking about. These guys are capable of dealing damage, and they can very easily take out even the most armored of unit. Of course, I'm not wearing the best armor in the world but that is a pretty significant amount of damage that they were able to deal and it's kind of crazy considering they're just recruits so let's have a look at what is actually going on here all right so the enemy has 104 units remaining i would assume that most of those are still going to be uh, recruits of some kind and we have 59 58 and counting as we go down now bear in mind that we've only lost eight it's in, in this entire battle, we've only lost eight, which is frankly fantastic. I think that in general, I could not have asked for my forces to do any better than this, especially against such a large army. But if we're able to do this, which I think is probably going to be possible at this point, I mean, uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure, because if you take a look at the actual battlefield, it seems like a lot of the enemies are scattering around and things, and it may look as though they are quite disorganized. But as you can no doubt tell, they're kind of just baiting the cavalry to come close to them, and then they're mobbing them all at the, all at the same time. They're just kind of ganging up on them extremely easily. But I'm hopeful that we still have a couple of horse archers with arrows still remaining. That's the main issue here. As you can see, this guy does not have arrows anymore and that's a problem because if our horse archers go into melee range here it is going to result in them actually being taken down as you can no doubt tell we are starting to lose more and more units um just that just that little bit quicker you know just that little bit quicker it doesn't have to be a super amount being lost but if they are able to turn it around in a significant way then we might have some issues but as you can see yeah, look at that. Imperial Recruit taking down a heavy horse archer, but that heavy horse archer did not die, thankfully. So we will be able to get him back on his feet. And look at this. Very even. 38 versus 40. I think because we have mounted units, or at least we have more mounted units than the opponent does, then we should theoretically be fine. But we have been drawn into a fight, which I don't really like. We're fighting in the trees. And that's not a good idea. That just is plain bad, you know, it's just a plain bad idea 
to fight in the trees, but I actually just want to highlight something really, really fast right here. You can see the battle and where it actually began. We started losing units around here, started taking out the enemy around here as well, and you can see that it actually stretches all the way over to where the current battle is being held. Actually kind of impressive to uh, still have those bodies all the way over there. I think it's very, very impressive indeed. Anyway, uh, I believe we're still kind of, it's still kind of close. It's still kind of close. Not entirely sure. You know, I am half thinking that I will take most of these guys prisoner, but I'm also half thinking that maybe I won't because if I allow them to leave, I'm going to continue gaining pretty massive amounts of relation and also, of course, honor and all that sort of all, all that sort of thing. And if they do end up, you know, getting more volunteers, which of course they will in the end, you know, they, they're still, of course, going to get volunteers and they're going to get their armies back to some kind of strength, then they're just going to have recruits for the most part, aren't they? So I should be able to deal with them again and not have too many difficulties. But oh, look at this. They're actually starting to fight back a bit now. And you can see that most of the enemies that are remaining are actually these guys, Imperial Legionnaires. And um, the other guys too, the uh, Palatine Guards. And they're very good. They're very good at what they do. Faron is actually still alive as well, which I do not appreciate. Because Faron is he's, he's going to be pretty good, you know. He's going to be pretty good at what he does. He has uh, some pretty decent stats, I would assume, as well. But this is close. It's, there's only 10 units in it, and they might very well be able to do something. Like, here's the thing. If these guys would literally just stand still and go into shield wall formation, I think they are actually in shield wall formation at the moment, but if they would just stand still next to a couple of trees, they're going to draw all of my units in, and they're going to be able to take them down very quickly indeed. And that's exactly what they're actually doing by the looks of things. As you can see, Faron, of course, is on his horse. This is him, I believe. And he is continuing to run around. And there's a couple of other people as well. Look at this. We're actually ending up losing quite a few units. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, we, we might be turning it around. We might be turning it around. Oh, it, it's like a merry-go-round at this point. Everyone's turning it around like nothing, nothing else. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I can only hope... I, this is the thing. I can't command my units while dead. I cannot do that. So I am relying wholeheartedly on my units doing a decent job and as you can no doubt tell they are being they are being mobbed they're being absolutely mobbed some of the time and I can only hope that they will continue to use their advanced speeds to be able to go in there do some damage and then get out but that doesn't seem to be working as you can see look at that that guy just got stopped right there and there's six enemies remaining we have 12 Okay, we might do it just purely on numbers. Yes, okay, they have five. Okay, ooh, this is, okay, this is very tense right now. I'm actually kind of worried. I am actually kind of worried. This is literally the five. This is literally the five that are fighting against us right now. And they all have spears. As you can see, there's another one. They took out one of the last remaining heroes as well, which is great. And I think this might be a couple of them. There might be two two or more heroes here. I know Faron is still alive. There we go. Took out the legionary. Nice. Nice. Good work. They've actually started to move out of the trees, which is the main reason why we're actually getting a bit of an advantage now, because the trees are not stopping our hit-and-run attacks. So we're able to follow through a little bit more, a little bit easier, and oh no, Yana was actually still alive as well. Did you see that? Our wife was actually still alive. What a crazy, crazy woman she is. To be able to survive until the end. Wow. So there you go. That is indeed a victory for us. I wonder how much renown I'm actually going to get. <laughs> 107 renown. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I probably should not have risked that, to be honest. I, I should not have risked it. It is a bit too close for comfort for my liking. But uh, yeah, I'm actually just going to continue letting them go. I know, I know, we do want to create our own faction. But the thing is, is that if I can get to 75 charm, I'll be pretty happy with that. And also, we're going to get a, a lot of relation. We're going to build relationships with these people. And who knows? 
maybe when we've created our own faction, they might decide to defect to us or something like that, and that would be quite fun. But anyway, that's... Uh, oh, this guy's actually a really good... Um, Really good personality. Look at that. Yeah, he is a really, really good personality. So I'd like Joron to join us, potentially. Um, this guy is kind of like a neutral sort of thing. Maybe a martial, martial personality, something like that. And then what, what else do we have? Yep, he's also a martial personality. Martial personalities are kind of like neutral-ish. So they're not too bad. They're not bad and they're not, they're not super good, but they are decent to have as vassals. So nothing really to worry about there. This guy is is a kind of... Well, he says he's grateful, so I'm not entirely sure. He might be cunning. That guy might be a bit cunning. And Faron actually is martial as well. Ah, oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I am actually going to be taking all these prisoners. Um, and we will just hobble over to the uh, nearest... Uh, <laughs> to the nearest town... And I guess, you know what, I think I might actually just take absolutely everything. I think I might just take absolutely everything because we're going to go and we are going to go and uh, sell a bunch of stuff. So that kind of makes sense in my opinion. We're probably going to give our people some pole arms as well. Should we actually do that? Let's do that. Western long spear, imperial lance. And these guys already have that. This guy could use a new bow though. So there we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. That is looking pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. And I just can't believe, with 103 units, we were able to defeat an army of over 400. Pretty crazy. All right, so I'm going to go over to the nearby empire. Oh, dear. Uh, wait a minute. How, how slow am I going thanks to my... Th minus 3.78... Uh, well, my medicine skill is now 200. I'm actually going to get rid of a whole bunch of prisoners, I think. I think this is way too risky because we could get picked on by a bandit party at this point and probably get murdered. So we'll see what happens. Town projects that are related with sanitation and health give daily prosperity bonus by one per day. That sounds pretty good. Or increasing the loyalty of a settlement by one per day. Um, I think the loyalty is probably going to be more important, but I could be wrong about that, so don't quote me on it. This is the first time I'm getting medicine to such a high degree at this point. Anyway, uh, we have 90 units, so I'm going to get rid of a lot of recruits because they're not going to sell for that much anyway, and we're just going to get rid of a lot of the lower tier people so that we don't have to worry about them as much. So let's get rid of those and get rid of these. There we go. And there we go. All right. So we're still over the prisoner limit, but we have a lot more speed, as you can no doubt tell. And Byron has gained a level. Oh, it's been a while since he's gained a level, hasn't it? Okay. That's going to be quite nice to see. And uh, let's have a look and uh, check out what he's actually going to take. So I'm thinking we're probably going to spec into intelligence because we would like to increase our limit for medicine because of course he is our medic so technically being able to get to the maximum would be fantastic by the way this skill at the very end of the med med medicine tree is insane as you can no doubt tell troops start the battle with bonus hit points of the party leader's medicine skill minus 200 divided by two Eh. Maybe it's actually not as good as I thought, but it is pretty good still because I actually uh, misread it before and I actually thought it said um, uh, multiplied by two. <laughs> that would have been a bit crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have been a bit crazy, but it's still going to give units about 30 something. Uh, is it? Wait a minute. Minus 200 from 75. Yeah, about 30 something uh, extra HP, which is pretty good. You know, I think that's pretty good. So we're going to take some more intelligence. And I will be taking more engineering because I would I would love to be able to level up my engineering uh, faster. And uh, we're now going to go in here, sell our prisoners. Still no roguery skill, of course, which is to be expected. But yeah, well, never mind. And we will sell all of my gear because I already know that we don't. Uh, no one, no one wants anything from here. And we are also going to sell our weapons too. This is actually a really nice sword. And if I actually used a sword, actually, you know what? I think I might keep this. So I'm going to lock that and I'll just sell the rest. 
24,000 we're going to be gaining from this. Like literally, that is so incredibly insane. And uh, there we go. Okay, so I think we're pretty good now. <laughs> I mean, I think we've eliminated a lot of a lot of those vassals. So I'm going to head back to Kuzate territory now. And I'm going to try and recruit as many units as I can get my hands on. Most notably, what? Wait a... What, 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 what is it? What is, what, did you see that? I am so glad I caught that on camera. I am so glad I caught that on camera because I, I can imagine that people would be like, how did you do this? And I would be like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Why is my scouting skill now over a thousand or something? What? Uh, I have no idea. I could not tell you. I could not tell you for the life of me. I have no idea what actually happened. I have not changed anything since the last time I recorded. And you, you actually saw. You actually saw exactly what was going on here. Uh, I, I, I haven't cut away. I haven't cut away at all, except when I was um, changing the army around, and that was it. So, that's interesting. I I, well, I can't do anything about that now, I guess, so I, I might as well just uh, spend, my, uh, spend my trait points. This is kind of, uh, this is unbelievable. This is literally unbelievable. Oh yeah, th th actually something like this happened before. And it was in the last days of the Third Age, which is a Lord of the Rings based warband mod, if you don't know it. And basically you can you can choose to play as Uruks or Orcs or Goblins or uh, men or Elves or Dwarves or anything like that. And then you can play in the Lord of the Rings universe, which is really fun. And I had this happen one time before where I was playing as an Uruk. And I was running around, and I saved this lord. Um, and he was at like 0 HP or something like that. And because of a divide by 0 error, I then had my party size, or shall we say the influence gain that I gained from actually saving the fellow from dying, was multiplied by such an insane amount that I literally had a party size of like 3,000 or something like that. I can't remember exactly how much I had, but... It was really, really insane. And I think that something like this might have happened here as well. But of course, I actually don't know because I have no idea how that previous thing happened either with the exception of the divide by zero um, thing. So there you go. We now have a maximum scouting uh, level of 1,023. I have still no idea how that actually happened. I guess we will level up our engineering while we can, I guess. Is there anything actually really good here, by the way? Building development speed, 1.5. Devolt town projects are 60% more effective. I guess I could just spec in a whole bunch of intelligence because I do need to increase my learning limit anyway. So I guess I might as well do that uh, because I can spec to 10, I believe, is the maximum. So now that we do have maximum medicine, as you can see right here, my learning limit is now 240. So it seems as though I might not even be able to get there or it might just take me a long, long time more because as you can see, I can't take any more intelligence at all. So there's basically no point in me specking into cunning either at this point. Um, well, this is actually really good. All of these things are really good, but I suppose my tactics is going to, is going to increase naturally Anyway, I could go for some charm. I suppose charm might be kind of cool. So I guess I'll just put some focus points in that. And uh, I guess I'll go for some more control skill as well because I'd like to get my bow skills as far up as I possibly can. And then I guess leadership. I guess leadership. That's basically the only other thing that I can really do. Uh, I suppose. I mean, Stuart is pretty good too, but uh, I think that's fine. I am still extremely shocked. I have no idea. I really have no clue. That is kind of insane. Oh, look at this guy. He actually gained some scouting points as well. This is interesting. Okay, well, yeah, there we go. So, here's the thing now. Because we have over a thousand scouting, it has now insanely improved my scouting range so dramatically that I am able to see all the way over here. 
Uh, why? I don't know why this stuff happens to me. Uh, okay, well, I, I think it, w you know, it might actually cause my, my save to corrupt itself, which, um, would be bad. It would be bad, wouldn't it? Yes, well, now I can see absolutely every single person coming towards me as well now, so this is, this is hilarious. Okay, well, um, how's this guy doing? He's got 132 recruits. Well, I'm moving extremely fast now, so I don't think anyone can actually catch me ever. I have, what is it, 7.2 speed, and I still have 51 units that are wounded. So they're, of course, causing me to run even slower than I would normally. Crazy. Absolutely insane. I, I have, I st wow, I'm still absolutely stunned. Okay, so we are going to go back to Kuze territory, as I said before, and uh, we'll, um, well, I will be doing a little bit of, um, a little bit of recruiting, I suppose. Oh, wait a minute, I've actually just thought something real quick. I actually did change myself back to Scout, because I thought to myself, hey, it might actually improve the speed at which I get scouting experience because I know a, a number of you have been very helpful in the comments and you've actually said to me hey you, you can level up scouting by running through trees and stuff and I was like oh okay yeah that's that's cool and uh, I think uh, someone else also said that um, to level up scouting you just make yourself scout in your clan and that's kind of what I did <laughs> that's kind of why I decided to do that because I thought oh yeah that might make sense you know Maybe I can level myself up a little bit more. I can gain more focus points. I can gain more attribute points. And um, then I can maybe make Byron into a bit of a stronger character. And I think this is a bit ridiculous at this point. Uh, I did not want scouting this high, to be honest. I would have liked it to just stay at around, I don't know, 150 or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.